Well, all right, that was a f homicide. Yo, ho, ho, Da Mafia, Victory Monday for Western New Yorkers and Buffalo Bills fans alike. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the team that I was expecting to see before the season even started. Now, granted, our team did come off to a very slow start, losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, mind you, just ended up losing to the Bengals this past week. If we were to get the Steelers in any other week this, se this season, I guarantee you that we would have won. Total fluke. Completely crushed the Miami Dolphins, exclusively thanks to our defense. But week three against the Washington football team was the most complete victory I have seen in a very, very long time. And in all honesty, guys, I mean, I wanted to take today's video and just give off a list of celebrations, things that I absolutely love to see of what ended up happening this past Sunday. And then very, very, very few things that I was a bit skeptical on that I still think need to be worked on. I mean, I would say that they're more along the lines of a fluke, not something that I foresee being a habit, but still things that need to be addressed. Before we dive into any of that though, here is a word from today's sponsor. Oh brother, Dan with another advertisement. And I'm willing to bet that he's getting paid for this too. You're damn right, what you think this is? Well luckily today's sponsor just so happens to be MyBookie, something that I am a regular user of. If you have no idea what MyBookie is, it is the number one online sports book across the entire internet. It is my go-to place for any type of parlay, spread, money line, and over under bets, and much, much more. This football season, if you are looking for an online sports book, look no further than my bookie. And so what makes it better is that my bookie is also hooking up the Don Mafia with matching your very first deposit up to a thousand dollars as long as you put in the code DM. So you know, like the letters DM. Used in a sentence would be why is your mother in my DMs? So whatever you're doing, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. If you really know what you're talking about with football, you might as well make some money off it. And my bookie is the place to do it. So whatever you're doing, hit that link in my description and let's start making some money. Dumb Mafia, you just look at that score and you know that the Buffalo Bills came to play. Now, like I said, there are several celebrations and this video won't be too long, but I really wanted to go on ahead and just sort of celebrate with everybody at this point. Number one, Josh Allen. That was the MVP candidate coming into 2021 that we all wanted to see. Now, we all know his struggles. He ended up going up against um, one of the best pass rushes in the NFL against the Steelers. He ended up going up against one of the best secondaries against Miami. But then in week three, on paper, he went up against, in my opinion, personnel-wise, the best defense in all of football, in the Washington football team. And Josh Allen clearly, clearly ended up fixing the majority of those mistakes. Five total touchdowns, over 356 yards, a rushing touchdown, four passing. Dude man legitimately ended up completing a pass to eight different receivers. Cole Beasley being that number one guy that he ended up falling to when he really needs to get into a rhythm, he was exceptional. He was exceptional. I mean, I do know that there were a couple of throws in the beginning. Uh, one in particular was when he ended up missing digs just by a hair going into the end zone. But what I saw to Josh Allen, I absolutely loved. So many of us might remember that I was complaining prior to the Washington football team game that Josh Allen was completely straying away from what made him so good, right? He was really not being called a lot in the play action and he wasn't going outside of the pocket and extending plays. What happened during week three? He did both of those things and his numbers absolutely popped off. I mean, legitimately, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to look at his stats from week one and week two, I mean, he was like right in the middle of like mid fifties for completion percentage. Dude man balled out so much that now he's sitting around 63. And I'm only hoping that he, that he can continue to have that type of success moving forward, which makes it even better is, is the fact that we're really not going up against a very difficult defense for quite some time. I would probably have to say the next defensive battle that our offense needs to go up against is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but that is still very far 
down the road. Houston Texans, not necessarily worried about them. The Chiefs have had their struggles. They ended up dropping two in a row. Still think it's going to be a challenge going into Arrowhead. Um, and then the Tennessee Titans, who legitimately have a pretty weak secondary for the most part. So it seems like our gauntlet for defenses has completely taken a back seat. And Josh Allen ended up figuring out how to be able to surgically dissect these defenses. I mean, even when the game started getting out of hand, when we had that absolute fluke of a play when it came down into Isaiah McKenzie just deciding not to return the football. And so that one time our defense ended up just missing a couple of tackles and Antonio Gibson ended up taking it to the house for 70 plus yards. Most would think that momentum would have switched, but opening up into the third quarter, Josh Allen legitimately takes the ball the entire distance eats up about nine minutes on the clock and completely shows everybody in the world wh why he is still a top five quarterback in the NFL at this point. Very happy with this. I'm really hoping that this stays consistent. It does help that we're going up against the Houston Texans. So I fully anticipate us to have a wild game from Josh Allen's side of things. Wide receivers did absolutely fantastic. Diggs wasn't as involved as many would have hoped, I suppose. But one thing I did like seeing was that Emmanuel Sanders is finally starting to gain chemistry with Josh Allen. Prior to this game, he was targeted a lot, but as far as chemistry, as far as them two being synced with decision-making, it really wasn't the best duo, but it seems like Emmanuel Sanders and Josh Allen finally ended up putting that together. Same thing with Dawson Knox. Dude is developing. He really is. You knew that I was one of the biggest critics of Dawson Knox with his ability of not being able to hold onto the football. But Dude Man has been making a lot of great plays so far this year, and this game moving forward was yet another example of his progression. Unsung hero. I think a lot of people haven't been talking about this. The Buffalo Bills offensive line did amazing. Josh Allen was not sacked once, ladies and gentlemen. Josh Allen was not sacked once. Now going into the game, I was convinced that we were going to see a very similar um, pass rush that we saw from Pittsburgh during week one. I mean, when you look at the Washington football team defensive line, they are absolutely stacked when it comes into their front four. I mean, legitimately, we are talking about all first round picks. Our offensive line did absolutely tremendous being able to hold off players such as Chase Young and Montez Sweat. And so they were giving Josh Allen plenty of time and Josh Allen was able to extend plays with his own legs. Our offensive line, absolutely unsung heroes. And then last but not least, we have to tip our hat to Zach Moss, which has seemed to be a lights out running back since he fumbled during week two. Practically everything after that has been absolutely flawless and it seems like he is our RB1 for this team as, as his progression continues to move forward. Going into the defense, right? This was a bit of a different defensive game ball, if you will. Last week, we all know our pass rush ended up completely dominating. Our pass rush was a little bit of, was a little quiet against the Washington football team. The, their offensive line is pretty good though, a lot better than what we ended up going up against during week one and week two. But who really, really ended up showing up for the Buffalo Bills were the DBs. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer both ended up getting themselves interceptions. Trey White, of course, with that punch ball. The Buffalo Bills ended up taking over, taking over the turnover battle, and we are seeing our 2019 defense back. The Buffalo Bills defense have, has proven that they are back into full form, and it all had to do with Star Lutelele coming back and a consistently healthy Matt Milano who at the exact same time ended up balling, balling out. That man is worth every single penny of that four-year, $44 million contract that we ended up giving to him. If we can continue to see the consistency from our defense, and if Buffalo plays the way that they did offensively in every single game moving forward, there's not a team in this league that can beat us. Now, consistency only seems to be the missing ingredient. Can we remain consistent? and play complete football for every single game moving forward? That is the question. Now, one thing, I did want to address it, one thing that I was upset about was that kickoff from Isaiah McKenzie. Now, at first, if you were watching my live reaction, I had no idea what was going on, right? However, what happened was, it seemed like Isaiah McKenzie just decided not to catch the ball whatsoever. I think he had a brain fart. He might've thought it was a punt return or something along those lines, but what we witnessed on Sunday just so happened to be 
Uh, the longest onside kick in NFL history, essentially, is how you need to look at it. I think that this was a one-off excuse. I almost guarantee you that Sean McDermott, the rest of the coaching staff, uh, really got upset with McKenzie. He's not going to make it again and not something that we need to worry about moving forward. Overall, amazing game. I ended up turning off my television, feeling so, so confident in my squad. Do me a favor, leave me a comment. Were you expecting this type of victory? And if you weren't, what is giving you confidence moving forward into the season as our schedule, defensively at least, seems to be spiraling down? Dom Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. As always, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and before I let you go, you better always remember, let's go Buffalo.